Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Today I'm launching a new series on the channel. Now, I'll be honest, I actually developed the idea for this series at the end of last year. I'm now either launching it at a really inappropriate time or maybe quite an appropriate time. Every month I get questions from you guys asking whether now could be a good time to buy certain cars. Whether that's the sort of McLaren 720S sub 200 grand or Alpha 4Cs at 35 grand or maybe even Aston Martin Vantages. Well, that's what this series is hopefully going to answer. I'm going to be getting behind the wheel of certain cars that have maybe had their sort of biggest hit of depreciation and could potentially be good ownership propositions. Now I'm fully aware with the whole COVID-19 pandemic that car values are going to change in the months ahead and also buying a bargain supercar isn't going to be the top of everyone's agenda right now. But last month I went to Aston Martin Bristol to film the first episode in this new series and I still wanted to publish it because well I enjoyed making the video. So if you've ever wondered or ever asked if now could be a good time to buy an Aston Martin V12 Vantage S, here are my thoughts. Now I've been very vocal over the years for my love of this shape Vantage. I mean, I've talked about the fact that I've nearly bought one about two or three times, sometimes from Aston Martin Bristol, but also other locations. Um, and yeah, it's just, I still think an iconic shape. And in years to come, I feel like people are gonna look back on this Vantage and go, what a beautiful car. That's not to say the new shape is not also beautiful. You know, I'm a fan of that. And that's the AMR, the manual version in a stunning, grey and all the, oh, anyway, we're here to focus on this one, um, because yes, I feel like over the last 12 to 18 months since the new car came out, I've been receiving a lot of questions from people saying, is now a good time to buy a V12 Vantage S? I'll be honest, mainly focused around the manual variant, and we're going to get into that shortly, but also with regards to this, which is well, I guess you'd call it a semi-automatic because it is a single clutch automatic gearbox in here called Sport Shift 3. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's get going, let's get driving so I can explain what all these terms mean. Um, but first of all, I'm just excited to be in here. Let's just adjust some stuff quickly. Bish bash bosh, ready to go. Let's get the fundamentals out of the way then. This is a six litre V12 engine putting out 565 horsepower in a car which is the same size as my shoe. A beautiful car which is the same size as my shoe. Now, the V12 Vantage itself made right up until 2018. So, you know, you could have bought this car a couple of years ago brand new, but since the new shape has come out, no more. And rumour has it that unfortunately Aston won't be offering the new Vantage with a V12. Something about it not being able to fit into that new body. Now, that is unconfirmed. I am holding breath. But my slight concern would be that given the V12 we've seen in the DB11 and the DBS, I'm not sure it would still be as kind of raw and impassioned as this car because there's something about this engine and this kind of package which is just I mean incredible I remember one of my favorite musicians of all time Slash from Guns N' Roses appeared on Top Gear talking about his obsession for this little thing and it just made this car even cooler I mean if it wasn't already badass enough now fundamentally this is still a GT car even though the Vantage is always supposed to be the sort of smaller more sporty variant of the Aston Martin range it is still comfortable it is still elegant it's still a nice place to be and a place that you would love to spend a long road trip in but when you mate it with the behemoth that is the power plant up there it does turn into a bit of a tail happy animal 
So let's get into this whole sport shift versus manual thing because I feel like that is kind of where a lot of the questions are coming from. Is it a good time to buy a V12 Vantage S manual or sport shift? Now there's quite a fundamental difference in price and that really comes down to the exclusivity or the rarity of the cars. This Sport Shift 3 car, around 80 grand. This actual specific car I'm in right now is just under 80 grand. If you want a manual, you're looking at over 100, maybe 115, 120. If you can find one, because so few were made, final numbers were never really confirmed, but it's expected that in the UK, it was kind of around the 50 mark. So you just don't find them. I did actually drive, though, a manual V12 on Jeff. Uh, uh, F V12 Vantage S from Aston Martin Bristol a couple of years ago. It was the seven speed manual with dog leg first gear. And I'll be honest, whilst it was insanely cool, I didn't really bond with it because the clutch pedal was long, the biting point was really sort of high up, and all of us spent the day stalling. This car, with this Sport Shift 3 system, shouldn't give me that problem. Oh, it's, oh my, that is, <laughs> not only is that quick in terms of acceleration, those gear changes are quick. Oh, that downshift was not here. Oh, this car with a decat and exhaust. Oh yes, I'm loving it. You know what, the kick is super nice. I'm not driving it particularly well. Whenever you get into a single clutch, well, a car with a single clutch gearbox like this, you kind of have to learn how to, to feather the throttle to kind of get the perfect gear changes. But it doesn't really matter because it's letting me know that a gear change has taken place and oh, this thing is rapid. Feels super light on its toes though. That's the thing, it doesn't feel heavy and cumbersome. Which, you know, fine, the size kind of indicates to the fact that it probably wouldn't, but I just think it feels nippy. Oh, I'm starting to really enjoy this. So let's get into it. Let's answer that question. Would now be a good time to buy one of these cars? I'd have to say yes. And I'm not talking about it from a sort of investment point of view or a price point of view. I'm talking about the fact that how many more naturally aspirated V12 engine cars are we going to see? I don't think very many. Unfortunately, the world is going in a direction that means downsizing, turbocharging and electric, maybe even hydrogen. So these things are a dying breed and to see it mated into this beautiful British car that yes, fine, I'm a little bit biased about, <laughs> but in such a way that is still smooth and comfortable without being manic, I think it's absolutely amazing. And if you consider this variant, the Sport Shift, which maybe you could say is slightly less desirable because everyone's on about manuals these days. Wow, 80 grand for this. I mean, take what was its rivals in terms of modern cars, a Cayman GT4. Okay, fine, around a track, we're not keeping up with the GT4, but on a long road trip and also on a tunnel blast, my good Lord, this thing would win every day of the week. And if you turned up to any kind of, you know, function, or maybe meeting your in-laws for the first time, whatever it might be, this car's always gonna be received well. Oh, look at this guy. He's obviously not a, a dick dastardly character. He, he knows what he's doing in his life. Well, so if you turn up in a GT4 with a big old wing on the back and stuff, it's like, oh, who's this guy trying to kid? I don't know why I keep comparing this to a GT4, but it just, I'm just shocked by the 80 grand number. If we look at the manuals, as I said, hard to find. At 115 and 120, I think people are thinking maybe it's a good investment because they're so rare. I'll be honest, I think the days of investment cars are maybe a little bit behind us. Okay, fine, maybe your money's not gonna burn up in a hole, but I wouldn't see it as you're gonna get in that car and in 10 years time, it's gonna be worth 300 grand because the Sport Shift is arguably still a really good car. Just because it's rare, as Tony from Gravelwood taught me recently, doesn't mean it's always good. They made less manuals, probably because less people ordered them. Let's not forget that. It wasn't a limited run. It was just the fact that they went, okay, cool, yeah, if you want some manuals, here are some. These cars were still super popular and super good. So I wouldn't necessarily say, hold out and wait for a, wait for a manual. I think you'd be just as happy in one of these. Now, I've hit some traffic, 
And you know, in some cars, I'd be like, oh, well, this is a nightmare, what a disaster. But this is just such a nice place to be. There's supple leather. And you know what's kind of funny? I always used to use the infotainment system in this generation of Vantages as kind of an excuse as to why I wasn't buying one. But now that this is not the latest version, I, it doesn't really matter. It's like it's a modern classic now. And at which point do you ever get into a modern classic and go, oh, the sat nav's a bit outdated? It's so weird that. But back in 2018, when I was driving these and you could theoretically go and order one, it was like, oh, rivals offer so much better systems. Now it just doesn't matter. So yeah, who cares about the little tiny screen up there? It's actually kind of fitting. It takes me back to a previous era when life was simpler and it wasn't all touch screen, although there are some haptic buttons down here that I think kind of came in from the 177, I think. They were all a little incorporated. But anyway, yes, still a beautiful and iconic place to sit and to be. The only thing which I find a little bit weird about these cars is like old school Astons, the dials go in opposite directions. Always takes me a second to just go, oh, what's going on here? Because the rev counter goes anti-clockwise and the speeder goes clockwise. So you just see these things moving in opposite directions. And I'm like, something's about to burn up. But, uh, but no, it's just, that's how the revs work. <laughs> um, and when you see that red line at what? Seven, 8,000 RPM? I can't even see on here. I mean, that's just, that's just naughty, isn't it? A V12 like that. And we got a little bit unlucky there on our test drive route, getting stuck behind the number 625 bus, but you don't always win. And that's the thing with life. When you've got a car like this, you have to be prepared for those moments when you can't thrash it. That's what I love about these cars. They're just still fantastically elegant. So yes. Long summary, if you're thinking about buying one of these cars, do it. Because who knows what regulations are ahead of us. And imagine in five years time, if the government turned around and said, oh, we've got to scrap and crush all cars with engines that are bigger than five liters or, or more than four cylinders, we're all going to be going, why do we not jump in these things? And I know you're going to be going, Sam, well, look, you know, you can preach, you gotta, you got to act. Unfortunately, I've got no money at the moment. So I'm talking to those people that maybe have the money to be able to get into one of these things. I've been told of some insane PCP figures on this car. Oh, oh, tunnel! Oh, tunnel, no! Ah! <laughs> Bristol hate me, but I don't care. Someone back there would have liked it, I'm sure. Who can't? I mean, a V12 revving like that. Yes, so unbelievable. And then the fact that it can go like this. Yes, it, it's, you're gonna get in a lot of trouble this. I you know where I wanna take it. North Coast 500 immediately. This would be the perfect car for the North Coast 500. It would handle the bumps so well. You would have the soundtrack, the scenery. You turn up at a pub and they go, oh, hi, look at this, look at this gentleman. He's welcome in my establishment anytime. I don't know where this accent's going. I should probably stop. I've gone a bit Sean Connery, but maybe that's appropriate. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to go back to Aston Martin, Bristol, but I'm going to have to. Anyway, let's go. Let's go find George. Let's uh, make sure that I can fact check some of my uh, wild statements there, because some of them could have easily been uh, wrong. And then let's see, uh, see what he thinks about the V12 Vantage. George. Aha. That car. Oh my God. It's amazing, I, isn't it? I'm obsessed. It will <laughs> change your life forever. <laughs> I think I prefer it to the manual that we drove all those years ago. Yeah, well, the, the, the sport shift was how it's intended to be. So when they first brought up the Vito Vantage, it was a manual only car. They then did a very short run of the Roadsters and they kind of, they kind of finished it, that was it. And then people kind of missed it, so they brought it back, but the new era, and that was meant to be sport shift. So the car was always intended to be sport shift from the outset. Okay. They sort of brought the manual back as a bit of a novelty at the end of the sure, production. Sure, some people so, asked for it. And then, yeah, well, anyway, exactly. as I say, for me, I think, and the price difference, I would always go with sport shift, but, I'm getting a bit carried away. Anyway, you've always got incredible stuff lurking here. I mean, the fact that I, I just totally cruised past the Zagato to come and tell you how much I loved every yeah. <laughs> 12. Yeah. Um, quickly, because I'm doing, you know the piece I'm doing today, which is, is it the time to buy? Yep. What are those cars like in terms of running costs? Because I can't imagine V12 is... Uh, fairly, fairly, fairly simple. It's an annual service every year. Um, service cost is, is not thousands of pounds, like, like some of its Italian cousins. Sure. I think you'd be looking to spend a thousand or less 
okay. every time you service the car, depending on what needs to be done. Um, if you buy the car from a main Aston Martin dealer, like ourselves, oh, hello. Um, there he is with the plug. all of our cars go under the what's called the timeless certified pre-owned scheme, so you get like a year's uh, manufacturer's warranty as a minimum with the car, the car comes with a year's MOT, and we make sure things that the services are up to date, we bring the car up to spec in terms of the service history, and do a 140 plus point inspection to make sure all the tyres and clutch and brakes, all that thing is checked out <laughs> for, the, for the peace of mind. So. I love the way, the minute you started talking about that, you started looking directly down the lens. You're such a salesman. <laughs> You're such a salesman. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for today. I'm no going to go into a little bit of a summary always. piece. I feel like I maybe need to come back for these two. That is, that's a whole other test drive, isn't it? whole other test drive, another opportunity, another day. Yeah. So what's my summary then? I think if you are looking at the V12 Vantage S, don't get obsessed or hung up on the whole manual thing. I would actually argue that the Sport Shift is just as good, just as engaging, and in my opinion, actually slightly better. But anyway, as you can tell, the wind has really picked up, so it's time for me to wrap things up. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you have, and make sure you stay subscribed for any more videos to come. <laughs>